Hello, friends. I know that many of you are probably feeling overwhelmed with emotions right now, including myself. So I thought that for today's video, we'd kick back and do something light and fun. So for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you may have already seen that I've done three rounds of the six fan arts challenge already. And I did all of them during Instagram live streams over the course of several weeks. And it was so fun getting to chat to you guys about various TV shows and movies. So I thought that I'd bring it over to YouTube as well. So for those of you who might not know already, the six fan arts challenge was something going around on social media where people would ask their followers to suggest characters to draw. And for the most part, for the first three rounds, I were I was picking characters that were suggested by you guys. But for this round, I decided to choose characters on my own that I've personally been itching to draw and franchises that I knew I wanted to talk about in today's video. So just as a forewarning, this voiceover is going to function pretty similar to like a podcast where I chat about the characters and series they're from. Um, I may or may not have like slight spoilery things to say, so you are warned. <laughs> uh, I'll have um, timestamps in the description box in case you want to skip over certain characters that you're not interested in. Also, the drawing process of each of these characters is pretty much going to be the same. I use my favorite red Coley Race colored pencil to do the sketching. Then use alcohol-based markers for the base and for some key shadows. And then from there, I use color pencils to render the rest of the shadows and some highlights on top of the markers. All of the supplies that I use will be listed in the description down below as usual. These six fan art pieces, I wanted to keep fairly casual. So I put most of the focus on the skin and the face and then the clothes and hair I'd render to a minimum to cut down on time. <laughs> Even still, each of these characters took roughly an hour to do. So there was about six hours of footage that I had to edit down. Originally, I was aiming to have the video be about 20 minutes long in total, but I know a lot of you guys have expressed wanting to see my sketching process and many of you have said that you like my long videos. So hopefully this is like a nice happy medium. So first up is Koga from the anime Inuyasha. For the past little while, I have been re-watching Inuyasha, which has been so fun because it has been ages since I last watched it. During this quarantine, I've developed this little nightly ritual now where I curl up in bed with my laptop and I watch a few episodes of Inuyasha before I go to sleep. It is so nostalgic and so comforting. <laughs> this show was one of my many anime obsessions when I was in high school. I used to draw so much fan art for this show. And one of my favorite characters back then, and having now been re-watching the show, still is, is Koga the Wolf Demon. This is something that I don't know it's just he's so incredibly endearing about how straightforward he is and I love that uh he reevaluated his relationship to humans after having met Kagome and my <laughs> my friend and I always joke about how Kagome would have been so pampered and treated like a freaking queen if she had chosen to be with Koga rather than Inuyasha. But obviously the Koga Kagome dynamic is totally one-sided on his part and ultimately the Kagome Inuyasha pairing is definitely the more interesting one. Another favorite character of mine is Sashomaru who I was also debating on drawing, but I decided that Sashomaru is just too 
beautiful for such a casual sketchbook drawing. I have to do him absolute justice. So at some point, I will be giving him the full watercolor treatment in a screen cap redraw, I think. <laughs> Plus, I've always loved the character design combo of tan skin, dark hair, and blue eyes, similar to Sokka, for example, from Avatar The Last Airbender, who I've also drawn already. <laughs> this combo, I find, makes the eyes look really, really striking, and I personally really love rendering tan skin complexions because it's just an added layer of uh, being able to add in the highlights with colored pencils as well as the shadows. Because when I'm using uh, markers and colored pencils for lighter skin tones, the, the skin tones are usually too light to really bother with lighter colored pencils as highlights. So yeah, doing, doing these kind of like mid to dark skin tones are really, really fun. Something that I never understood though with Koga and Ayami, is that her name? Yeah. <laughs> Both of these characters are depicted without the white highlights in their eyes. Does someone know why that is? <laughs> I always wondered why. And at first I was like, oh, is it because they're demons? But then I realized that there's tons of demons in the show that have the white highlights in their eyes. And so yeah, when I was drawing Koga, I was debating do I add the white highlights or do I omit them? Uh, but ultimately I did add them in because I just find that the drawing doesn't really look complete without them. And I find that adding that white highlight in the eyes really kind of brings them to life. And it's just like that added little twinkle that I love. The second character in our lineup is Draco Malfoy from the Harry Potter series. Oh man, for those of you who don't already know, I freaking love Harry Potter. <laughs> I already drew Luna Lovegood, so I knew that I really wanted to draw another character from this series because there's just so many to choose from. And while Draco is certainly not my favorite character from the series, I was compelled to draw him because admittedly, like I'm sure many of you, I totally used to have a crush on Tom Felton who played Draco in the films. <laughs> he, his portrayal as Draco is probably the only reason why the character is liked at all. I feel like if you take Draco Malfoy's character solely based on the books, there is no reason to like him, <laughs> but there's just something about Tom Felton's portrayal and kind of the elements that they had added in for the films that kind of make you like him, even though generally he is kind of just like a weasel, but you know, anyway. <laughs> I remember my uh, my friend, she bought me a little Draco Malfoy figurine and I brought it with me to college. And then when I graduated from college, I moved a bunch of my things into my mom's basement. And when I moved to Toronto, I had like a really small apartment and I didn't see that I had the figurine and I thought that I had lost it. And I was like, so disappointed. Uh, but then a few Christmases later, I was at my mom's place, my mom's place, and I found the little Draco Malfoy figurine displayed and being used as like a bracelet holder on my mom's vanity amongst her like nice perfume bottles. <laughs> I thought it was so funny and I just like didn't have the heart to remove him from his new home. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, for those of you who are wondering, I am like Draco, also in the Slytherin house. I took the Pottermore quiz many years ago when it first launched, and then at some point the website required you to take the quiz again, uh, and so I took it again, and I still got sorted into Slytherin. So I feel like I am a Slytherin through and through. I remember the first time when I took it, I was offended that I was sorted into Slytherin because at that time I was like, what, I'm not a Slytherin, I'm not evil, how dare they? <laughs> and then years later when I took it again and I got Slytherin, I was like, you know what? 
I'm embracing this because I feel like, you know, I got, I became a better reader, I think. And I realized that the books are really biased towards Gryffindor because the books are in Harry's perspective. And so I think that, you know, there's elements of the, of Slytherin House like being really driven and goal oriented, which I think represent me pretty well. So I'm now a proud Slytherin. Plus snakes are cool as hell, so. <laughs> oh, also I took the Patronus test and I got a Palomino horse which I was kind of disappointed by. I get that horses are seen as very majestic, strong animals. So I feel like, you know, it's not a bad Patronus to have, but I've just never really been a horse girl. <laughs> so I think, I don't really know what I was hoping for, but I just remembered being like, oh, <laughs> when I got the result. While I was working on this, I was happy to have discovered that there is this new audio series on Spotify. And basically what it is, is uh, various actors reading Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Um, each chapter, they bring in a new person or cast of people to read the chapter. And the first chapter was very fittingly read by Daniel Radcliffe and there's been tons of other notable actors from the Harry Potter franchise and outside of the franchise as well. My favorite so far has to probably be Eddie Redmayne. Uh, he was just so enthusiastic during his reading and you can just like hear the excitement in his voice. It's so endearing. Also, fun fact, Eddie had said in an interview that he apparently had auditioned to be in the Harry Potter films multiple times. Uh, once to be, um, I think he was uh, auditioning to be one of the Weasleys. I forget which Weasley, maybe Percy, I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, and then another time to play young Tom Riddle in the Chamber of Secrets. Now, we of course all know that eventually he did get to be part of the Wizarding World uh, as Newt Scamander in the Fantastic Beasts uh, films. I really liked the first one. I really liked Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, but I never ended up bothering to see the sequel because I just wasn't really crazy about the casting of Johnny Depp as uh, Grindelwald and... I didn't really hear great things about the film, so I don't know. Let me know if you guys liked it. <laughs> So anyways, if you're interested in listening to the um, the audio readings, they I found them on Spotify. They're listed under the podcast section and they're called Harry Potter at Home. And if you want even more Harry Potter co uh, podcast content, I also highly recommend the podcast Witch Please, which is hosted by, as described in their bio, two lady scholars. They discuss each book and each film back to back. And while they are definitely both fans of the franchises, they are also willing to criticize it as well and have really meaningful discussions about various themes and topics, which I really appreciate. Also, if you're wondering if Draco is not my favorite character, who is? Well, for me, it's kind of a toss up between Luna Lovegood, Hermione Granger, Fred and George Weasley, and Remus Lupin. I know that's like a pretty long list, <laughs> but there's just like too many characters to just pick one. Our third character is Yoroichi uh, Shihon from the anime Bleach. She was really hard to draw, guys. As you probably saw, I had completely finished sketching her out and then erased it and started from scratch because I was just having such a difficult time getting her hair right specifically. I mean, I was having a hard time in general, but her hair was really tough. Anime hair defies all laws of physics sometimes, and it makes it really tricky to translate into my style. 
but yeah anyways so uh similar to inuyasha bleach was also a show that i had enjoyed quite a lot in my high school years and had decided to revisit during quarantine i have been equally obsessed with it again and yeah, I just I was reminded how the Bleach universe is just so interesting. It's really creative and I I especially love that even though this uh show has got a huge cast of characters like many shonen animes do, uh but Bleach I find makes a particular point to really dive into the backstories and show flashbacks of many of its characters even if they're not part of the main cast. I find that in doing this, it really expands the world and it also gives so much more depth to its characters. Like for example, the episode where they show uh, Renji and Rukia growing up together. Oh my gosh, that hit me in the feels, you guys. I had completely forgot about that episode and when it popped up, I was just like, oh, my heart. <laughs> I also really love the uh, creativity behind all the different swords uh, that the Shinigami wield. It makes the show really exciting, uh, waiting to see what kind of unique elements each sword is going to have and how they're going to utilize it uh, in the, the fight sequences. Because, uh, you know, as much as I love Inuyasha, uh, you know, his sword is pretty basic in comparison. It's got like three moves and that's it. <laughs> One of my favorite characters from the show is uh, Toshiro Hitsugaya, um, which, yeah, he was, I was like really, really obsessed with him as a teenager. Um, he wields a sword of ice and the animation for it is so cool to watch. I already drew him for um, another round of this challenge. So I decided to go for one of the female characters from the show and another favorite of mine, who is Yoroichi. She is hella fierce and i freaking love that she can turn into a black cat <laughs> that was like a fun surprise when i first watched the show when she's revealed to be a woman <laughs> i love that by the way if you've never seen bleach before and happen to be interested in watching it skip over all the filler arcs <laughs> if you google like watch Bleach without filler arcs or something, people have compiled lists of which episodes to skip. And if you don't know what the heck I'm saying, uh, the filler episodes contain storylines that did not come from the manga, which is the original source material. And so I personally find them kind of lame and they don't really, they have no consequence in the grand scheme of the overall plot of the series. So the, the show is quite long and I find that it's uh, much more concise and just better viewing to skip all of the, the filler arcs. <laughs> and for those of you who have watched Bleach, let me just say that I 1000% ship Ichigo with Rukia. I am such a sucker for pairings of characters that have like a really fiery dynamic and I love the like, you know, rivalry dynamic turn to something else kind of thing. Um, not that, you know, this show really cemented anything, but I don't know. I, I feel like the Ichigo and Orohime pairing just felt too vanilla for me and they're both gingers so just like visually that didn't make sense to me either <laughs> so hashtag sorry not sorry <laughs> something that you'll learn from me pretty quickly is that i love shipping characters especially <laughs> from when i was a teenager because i had no love life when i was a teenager and so i got all of my fuel from fictional relationships <laughs> also i am so freaking excited about the news that the show is going to have its final season following the final arc from the manga i remember being so disappointed when the series had its kind of like open ending i i had started reading the manga back then because i wanted to know how everything unfolded but I fell off eventually, and so now that I am back into Bleach, it is 
perfect timing to be able to get that final season and have it come full circle to a more satisfying conclusion because I'm the type of person who needs that closure and I just prefer, yeah, I just prefer having, you know, all the loose ends tied up. Our fourth character is none other than Princess Azula from Avatar The Last Airbender. I couldn't possibly get away with not talking about this show. It is my absolute favorite and I will never get tired of it. If you are a fan of animated shows and somehow have not seen this one, do yourself a favor and watch it immediately. <laughs> the world building, the character development, the story, the animation, like literally everything about it is so well done and it's mm, chef's kiss. So good. When I was younger and watching the series for the first time, Sokka was my favorite character because I really related to the fact that he had no bending abilities, which often made him feel less special than his peers. But instead of wielding the elements, he had his wit and intelligence, which I think is pretty admirable. And I felt like, you know, he was an underdog in that sense. Then getting older and watching the series again, Zuko ended up becoming a big favorite because he goes undergoes such an incredible transformation. He probably has one of the most interesting character arcs like ever. His redemption is just, it's so good and it's so satisfying. And his enduring struggle is so inspiring and really motivating. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I get so caught up and really empathetic to uh, these fictional characters. But, you know, I drew Sokka, I drew Zuko, and so I had to draw Azula because, you know, she's gotta be one of the best villains. She's calculative, a perfectionist, and kind of a psycho, and I freaking love her. <laughs> Fun fact, so for those of you who have seen the show, you might remember that in the finale, Zuko like bursts into his father's prison and demands, where's my mother? And then the show never addresses it. I remember being so frustrated with that ending because I just, I wanted to know what happened. I was like, why would you bring this up and then not follow through? And eventually I found out that the original intention was that they were going to do a final film, like a movie that would act as the epilogue to the series. And the focus of the storyline would have been them going to find Zuko's mother and finding out what happened to her. And unfortunately the film never ended up happening due to whatever reason. But at the very least, the story did end up getting told in a graphic novel, which I found was really interesting. And if anything, it just made me more salty that it never got its film adaption. <laughs> also, for those of you who are wondering, my opinion on the M. Night Shyamalan film version of the series is that, dear lord, those never should have happened. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and lastly, uh, about the Netflix adaption, I am very wary. Fantasy shows like this really lend itself to animation and I just don't really see the point in recreating it in live action. I don't find that more compelling in any way. I feel like it's potentially just gonna look kind of cringy and I know that the original showrunners are apparently involved and that they, uh, they want to expand on the story, but honestly, I would have just rather have seen more animated Avatar content, like, the Legend of Korra doesn't really, I don't think it really quite compares to The Last Airbender, but I was definitely way more invested and way more interested in watching that than I probably will be in the live action version. Fifth character is Garnet from Steven Universe. Man, this show makes me so happy. Everything about it, I feel like the, the animation style, character designs, its overall themes, the songs, the songs are so good. Um, and I just love seeing um, a show like this that is so inclusive and diverse, especially for a show that is new and geared, you know, technically geared towards children. And from the very beginning, Garnet was always my favorite. She is such a badass, but at the same time is so warm and gentle. 
Her interactions with Steven are the freaking cutest. It's so sweet. I mean, all the relationships in the show is just so wholesome and I freaking love it. By the way, I haven't actually finished the series yet. I have seen a handful of episodes that take place after the film, but I have not quite gone to the finale yet. One, I'm really slow on watching new stuff. And also, I feel like I'm just not ready. <laughs> I have a really ha a bad habit of doing that. Like, even though I just talked about how I like having closure and tying up loose ends, I, I also have a really hard time of like allowing a series to end if I'm really invested in it because when it's over, it just makes me feel so sad and empty. And so I just, you know, I end up avoiding it as long as possible. Like for example, when I rewatched Call Me By Your Name, I just didn't watch the last 20 minutes or so of the film because that ending, it just rips your heart out and stomps on it. So <laughs> I was like, I'm not prepared for this again. So <laughs> I'll just avoid it and pretend that they live in Italy and happily ever after. Anyways, random tangent. Um, if you're a fan of Steven Universe and haven't seen the film yet, I highly recommend it. The music was fantastic. The story was really interesting and very enlightening to more about Pink Diamond. Spoiler alert, uh, spoiler alert, it does not make you like her at all. I felt so bad for Spinel, who is like the new anger character that's introduced. But yeah, I've drawn Garnet once before and the last time I had painted her with uh, watercolors and colored pencils and I made her hair like this galaxy, which was really cool. And um, I thought it was really pretty, but this time around, I, you know, wanted to go a bit more straightforward, but I was really unsure of how to go about her hair because the thing about Steven Universe is that a lot of this crystal gem designs are like super stylized, which I love of course, but it makes for an interesting challenge to translate into my style. And I wanted it to have, you know, a way of fitting with the rest of the characters that I drew here. So um, I ended up going with um, giving the hair a little bit of texture to kind of resemble an Afro and still keep it blocky so that it still stays true to the overall character design, but you know, looks like actual hair and not just like a giant block. <laughs> And last but not least, we've got Shoto Todoroki from the anime My Hero Academia. I was really torn between drawing him or Yue from Cardcatcher Sakura. I know, like totally very different characters, but I ended up going with Todoroki because I feel like I've already discussed Cardcatcher Sakura pretty extensively on my channel before on my screen cap redraw of Sakura herself. So I felt like it made sense to go with a different series. My, my favorite character from Boku no Hero is actually Bakugo, but I have already drawn him. And another favorite of mine is Froppy, who I've also drawn. So third favorite is Todoroki. This show has been pretty popular for a number of years now, and it took me a while to finally get into it. Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, anime and manga was something I consumed a lot of when I was in high school, but as I got older, I began to spend less time consuming it and generally just didn't keep up with the as much like current and new content coming out. And for those of you who don't know, before the pandemic, I would pretty regularly table at the in the artist alleys at comic and anime conventions. And for a while, I kept seeing, you know, dozens and dozens of cosplays of these characters in these blue uniforms. Uh, and a lot of the character designs are very distinct. So eventually I began to put the pieces together and realize that they were all coming from this show. And I didn't know anything about the series except that they all had these blue uniforms and I actually had assumed that the anime was about sports uh, based on these uniforms. Um, and I'm not 
I just didn't have an interest in uh, watching a series about sports, so I just like never felt inclined to check it out. But convention after convention, I kept seeing, you know, the popularity of it grow. And I finally caved in and I was like, all right, let's go check out what all the fuss is. And uh, to my surprise, it is not a sports anime at all. <laughs> uh, but rather, it's, uh, it's a fun twist on the superhero genre and overall just like a really fun and entertaining show. Like Bleach, it's got a huge cast of char characters and uh, they have a lot of really, really creative powers. Um, and the main character, uh, Izuku Midoriya, is just the most wholesome being on the planet. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's so sweet um, and so unexpected. And I think like kind of progressive of um, a show like this to have such like a sensitive um, main male character. I, I love that. Unfortunately, the fatal flaw of this show on the opposite end um, is the character Minata, whose sole purpose is just to be like a pervert. Um, and for such a current like new series, I was really disappointed by such a problematic and outdated character. Uh, and even though many of the characters in the show point out that he's a nuisance and the I feel like the show is never it's never really framing him to be a likable character. But I don't know. I feel like it, it, he's so unnecessary. They, they should have just skipped having this character altogether. <laughs> But back to the actual character I'm drawing here. Um, when I initially started watching the show, my immediate late reaction was like, all right, the, char the, the creator of this series must have been a fan of Avatar The Last Airbender because this character bears so many resemblances to Zuko, uh, who also has a scar on his face that was inflicted upon him by a parent. And they both wield fire and also have overall brooding type personalities. And... <laughs> Naturally, I love both of them. Um, and generally, I've always been a really big fan of elemental type powers because when it comes to like fantasy and adventure shows, I feel like the animation always looks really, really cool for it. Um, and it's just like, I don't know, it's a it, it's a power that you can kind of have an understanding of. And I feel like uh, each show or series uh, handles the elements in a unique way. And it's always really interesting to see um, how they how they do that. Speaking of the animation, uh, something that I've noticed, you know, going back and watching uh, Inuyasha and Bleach and these older animes, I found that uh, the animation quality would fluctuate episode by episode. Uh, like some episodes, the animation would look really, really good. And then some episodes, the animation would be like kind of subpar and there'd be a lot of derpy faces. <laughs> but I find that with uh, Boku no Hero, the animation quality is quite consistent all the way through. Um, but I will say I love seeing on my Explore page like the the screen caps of <laughs> the characters like that are like way 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 into the background and they look extra derpy <laughs> but like all the fight sequences and everything like they always look really really good um i haven't read the manga but considering that um we're gonna have to wait quite a while for the fifth season i'm a little bit tempted to read the manga just because i'm curious to see where it's gonna go i felt like that last arc with the gentleman villain or whatever he was was really not satisfying at all <laughs> um but yeah anyway i heard that there's a movie maybe I'll, maybe i'll check that out to to satiate my my craving of this this series so yeah for the fifth season and moving forward in the show in general i really hope that we get back to the main cast of villains because they are definitely way more interesting when my friend and I were watching the the final kind of leg of the fourth season with this gentleman villain, we were so frustrated because we just like did not care about that character at all. <laughs> Plus, uh, moving forward, I also really want more of the female characters in this series to get their moment. I feel like there's tons of great female characters to work with who have interesting powers. They just rarely get the opportunity to shine or really take advantage of their powers. There's always, um, the limelight is always going to the male characters or I feel like, you know, the, the female characters, they just get like sidelined and I, I want them to shine. <laughs> Oh, and as you know, my teenage anime heart goes, which is just like at a hundred right now in quarantine and I'm consuming so much 
so much more anime than uh, I have in a long time. I would not be mad at a little bit more romance development between literally anybody in the show. <laughs> um, as my friend hilariously puts it, we're not asking for a lot. We just want a little, even just a little vanilla smooch will do, <laughs> you know? Like I get that this show is not about romance. It's an action adventure series, but these kids are in high school. They live on campus together. I feel like, you know, something is bound to happen eventually, right? <laughs> I feel like the obvious pairing, of course, is Midoriya and uh, Uraraka. Um, I always have a hard time saying her name. Um, but is it weird that I low-key ship her with Bakugo? Uh, I feel like when the two of them had uh, their battle, she um, he was the only one who took her seriously, saying, you know, like that he didn't find that she was fragile and I think that really showed that he respected her which like that's asking a lot of his character <laughs> plus opposite personalities I think make for a really fun combo because he's like really really hot-headed and she's really really sweet um, but I know people are probably gonna come for me because I know a lot of people uh, ship Bakugo with Midoriya or um, Kirishima, uh, which is understandable. I'm totally here for those two. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, that concludes all six fan art pieces. Uh, let me know which one was your favorite. Please do comment down below uh, about any opinions on any of these fandoms. I love discuss discussing TV shows with you guys, and I'm sure that we could all use that little bit of distraction and escapism. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!